Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. So two weeks ago, we talked about the possibility of giving a second booster to all adults. Now by now, it looks like we will get the second booster in the fall as early as in September, and it will be based on the BA4, BA5 subvariants, and as well as the original string. It is so-called a bivalent vaccine. Now we'll look at what we know about this booster or what we don't know, and we'll also look at some past flu vaccine studies and explain why a BA4, BA5 booster may be a wild card in the booster vaccine equation. So let's get started. What we currently know about the Omicron-specific booster is not much. Most of the information only comes from Pfizer and Moderna press releases. But so far the data was based on the BA1 booster, not the BA4, BA5 booster. And according to their words, the booster will increase neutralizing antibody levels. And these newly boosted antibodies work better to neutralize BA4, BA5 Omicron subvariants than the original string booster. Now, these findings are not surprising. However, at this point, even the manufacturers are still trying to figure out the effect of their BA4, BA5 based booster vaccines. Now, in fact, there are many variables that no one knows and no one can predict at this point. I know there could be unforeseen side effects, but here we are only focusing on the discussion on the efficacy side of the story. Now, since the FDA just requested the BA45 Omicron booster in June, if the new booster is rolling out in September, we will not have enough time to know how effective the booster will be against infection. We will not know the additional benefit of Omicron booster in preventing hospitalization and death compared to the original booster. And there is still no way to translate neutralizing antibody levels to vaccine effectiveness for protection. We also won't know the degree of which the Omicron specific booster might trigger additional T cells and B cells immune response and protections. And second, formulating the booster with a BA45 is only the best guess. For the past two years, we have seen a particular variant usually circulate for about four months before another more infectious variant took over. Take Omicron and its subvariants as an example. According to the CDC data, BA1 or the parental Omicron infection began in January and disappeared in about mid April. That's about four months. BA2 and its subvariant BA2.12.1 started in about late February and basically ended in late June. Now the BA45 started in late April, so if the pattern is similar to other subvariants, then it is possible to end in late August or September, and another new subvariant, such as the BA.2.75, may start dominating. BA2.75 is quite different from the BA45, and at this point, no one knows how BA45 booster vaccine would work against other Omicron subvariants such as this BA2.5. So, betting a BA45 booster for this fall is like playing a wild card and hoping for the best. If you have followed my previous videos, I expressed that it was very surprising that the FDA recommended a booster based on BA45 instead of BA1. Now, my rationale is that BA1 is like a parent for all the Omicron subvariants. It will provide a broader immunity to cover known and future subvariants that is coming off from Omicron. Now let's look at past vaccine studies and how betting on a wrong variant could be very bad for vaccine effectiveness. 
Before we look at the studies, we need to understand how the annual flu vaccine is selected. In brief, laboratories around the world collect flu virus samples and send them to the U.S., U.K., Australia, Japan, China, Russia for sequence analysis and to see how their surface proteins have mutated or shifted each year. And WHO would make recommendations on selecting the best viral combinations for the upcoming season's flu vaccine. But this method is not always perfect, and sometimes they could make a wrong prediction. This happened most recently in the 2014-15 flu season. That year, the seasonal flu vaccines performed unusually poor overall. But interestingly, people who had not been vaccinated that previous year were the ones most likely to benefit from the vaccine. Whereas those who were vaccinated two years in a row did not. In fact, this study was published in the Clinical Infectious Diseases in 2016 and was based on Canadian data. It showed that people who had two years of flu vaccine in a row had the lowest vaccine efficacy. In an even more unusual finding, people who were vaccinated three years in a row in 2012 to 13, 2013 to 14, and 2014 to 15 seasons appeared to have a higher risk of being infected with the dominant flu strain in that later season. This was an observation, but no one could explain why there were negative effects of serial vaccination in years. But we knew the same flu vaccine was used two years in a row, which implied the authorities made a wrong prediction on the dominant flu virus strain in the 2014-15 season. This study was not a flawed study. Other flu vaccine effectiveness researchers also thought this was a really good paper. The surprising result was also similar to a study published in 2010, where Canadians who had received a seasonal flu shot in the fall of 2008 were 1.4 to 2.5 times more likely to get an H1N1 infection requiring medical attention compared to those who did not get the seasonal shot. Now, these studies were all done before the pandemic, and scientists. Were allowed to openly discuss controversial topics and openly ask questions about the true vaccine effectiveness of repeated annual flu vaccination. It looks like we are moving toward annual COVID booster, and it's likely based on the best guessed variant. At this point, everyone could only hope for the best. But it doesn't mean we should all just blindly agree to all data released by the manufacturer. I only wish we would still be allowed to ask questions and re-examine the cumulative effect of each booster dose in the near future, like what we did with the flu vaccine in the past, and not get cancelled. Let's wrap up with an opinion from Dr. Paul Offit, who is on the FDA Vaccine Advisory Committee and the director of the Vaccine Education Center at the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. Now, basically, he said the second booster shot does make sense for certain groups, but a universal boosting strategy doesn't quite make sense. And he cited data showing that three doses of mRNA vaccine provide long-lasting protection against severe diseases. And at some point, we are going to have to get used to mild illness and learn to live with this virus, perhaps even for our children's generation. And in a separate interview, he said, "But will adding an Omicron component boost antibodies in a significant way against the next subvariant? There is no evidence that it will so far." Giving all adults an option to receive a full booster is good, but I know many organizations and businesses will mandate that full booster, and I bet my organization will require me to receive that full booster to keep my job, and that's a lot of taxpayers' money for Pfizer and Moderna.
That is all for this week. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've learned something new from this video. And if that's the case, please like, share, and comment. And I hope to see you again next week. And meanwhile, I'll be heading to a beach in New Jersey in the next few days. And I hope you will also enjoy your summer. Please take care. Bye.